When we first started this competition, we thought it was just going to be a little bit of fun, but actually it's turned out to be much more than this. It's turned out to be a showcase for what modern engineering is really about. It shows all of the work that our staff and students do here within the department, and it's an integrated engineering department, the largest in the country. And that means that there's a tremendous range of activities going on from all different scales, right from the tiniest atom scale engineering, right through to the engineering of some of the world's biggest civil engineered structures. Behind each image, there's a fascinating story which talks about modern engineering. And these stories really show the dedication of our young researchers and students who have been working away on an area of mathematics and science and taking it through engineering into applications. And that's been fantastic. So that not only are we exciting people with this photography competition, but we're also telling them something important about engineering and its role in society. So we received hundreds of photographs submitted by our staff and students. They're all very high quality, they all catch the eye. But when we were trying to choose the winners, perhaps our first criteria of thinking pretty ambitiously, we were thinking which one of these images could hang in the Tate Modern or the Tate Britain and be accepted as a work of art. This image was taken with an optical microscope and it shows a dried and cracked film of a waxy material called alkyl ketene dimer, or AKD, and it's spread over a glass microscope slide. The orange and brown areas you see are AKD, and the white lines are the cracks that have formed during drying. This material is widely used in industry to treat paper and reduce its ability to absorb water, improving our quality of printing and writing. My name is Ronan Daly, and I work with Alfonso Castrojon Pita in the Inkjet Research Centre in the Department of Engineering here at Cambridge University. We study inkjet technologies and their potential applications in a broad range of fields from 3D printing to medical diagnostic devices. AKD is one of many materials we are exploring that may change the wettability of other surfaces such as plastics. Wettability is important in microfluidics where we want to control the flow of very small volumes of liquid to make medical diagnostic devices. While this image may only be one of many steps in this experiment, when we see such beautiful natural phenomena, it always makes the work more exciting and motivating. My name's Graham Treese and I'm an engineer working on medical imaging. I'm particularly interested in how engineers can contribute to clinical problems. What you're looking at here, for example, is a computer-generated image derived from a clinical medical CT scan of the head. What it shows, with remarkable precision, is the thickness of the outer bone layer of the skull surface, known as the cortex. The areas that appear in pink show regions of the skull where the bone is less than half a millimetre thick. The dark blue areas are more than four millimetres thick. These imaging techniques provide clinicians and others with a new way of looking at the cortex. The three images here illustrate the remarkable symmetry in the skull. In the case of this individual, you can also see some asymmetry just above the eye socket at the location of a past injury. These same techniques are also being used to look at other bones in the body, such as the hip and spine, to find out whether these bones are at risk of fracture. Adhesive tapes are indispensable in our everyday lives. However, when they are used repeatedly, they become less sticky and lose their effectiveness. In contrast, geckos and other creatures have feet with the ability both to stick to things and to peel off, and this ability is not affected by the repeatable use. I am Paula Goldberg Oppenheimer and work in the field of interdisciplinary research, focused on combining soft materials such as polymers and hard materials such as carbon nanotubes and graphene for creating composite and hybrid structures with advanced properties and applications. My research aims to mimic the intricate structure and superadhesive properties of a gecko's food by transferring carbon nanotubes on polymer micrometer-sized pillars. Very thin, nanoscale structures with the walls formed by a one atom thick sheets of carbon are rolled into a tube-like shape and transferred on top of column-like structures with dimensions smaller than an individual hair. One way of making a microstructure is to sandwich a polymer film between two electrodes and pass a small voltage between them. 
The resulting high electric field and buildup of electrostatic pressure destabilizes the film, which develops undulations leading to the microstructured morphology. Things don't always go according to plan, and the image you're looking at shows what happens when the experimental device is not quite correctly assembled. Fractal instabilities have formed due to one of the electrodes coming into contact with the polymer film and trapping air, which compressed and subsequently expanded into fingers. Hi, my name is Ching Tan Ko. This image is taken from research I carried out with my colleague Daniel Strange under supervision of Dr. Michelle Oyen. We are interested in fibrous materials because they have been considered as replacements for various tissues, including cartilage and skin. This image shows the microstructure of a fibrous polymer scaffold. The structure consists of a random network with micrometer-sized fibers. The beauty of this structure is that it mimics the architecture of natural tissues. The method we use to produce this scaffold is an electrospinning technique. In this technique, we apply the very high voltage to pull very fine polymer fibers from the solution. We are interested to know how the microstructure of this material affects its mechanical behavior. Such understanding allows us to reproduce the mechanical characteristics of natural tissues, leading to better and more robust tissue replacements.